Welcome to The Riff. Today, Jeremy and Justin don't really riff. Jeremy comes prepared with a list of his top five things from 2023. It goes against the rules of The Riff to come prepared, but I've always said Jeremy's a rebel. Always. We hope today is helpful. Thanks for listening. Welcome, Riff listeners. Welcome, Justin. How are you? This is a great day because this is the kickoff of 2024. January 1. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. well. Thank you. Um, It's exciting. So would you have ever guessed that we would be uh, co-hosting a near award-winning podcast Mm -hmm. still in the year 2024? I had dreams and aspirations. Yeah, I never you did. never thought it'd be a reality. No. Honestly. I never I never thought I'd be here. You no. know? It's it's surreal. So we want to thank yeah. uh thank our listeners for signing us up for another year. Yeah. And uh, our sponsors. And our sponsors. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for those. Um yeah. if you're out there and you want a sponsor, we've talked it, about we it. We have we have some room. We have, we have room. some room. Yeah. So that's the beauty of it. And um I don't know how it typically works. Does it mean that if it's uh if we if we drop an episode on a holiday do we get more listeners uh, i would think so right because people have more time double time yeah right? is that right <laughs> so yeah so, yeah. Uh, so welcome all new riffraff yeah whole new riffraff <laughs> oh talk to me I, I don't think i've told you this oh i told you this i might have told you this no it's think the I'm, riff everything is just live in here oh, so just right. surprise me listen so we're reading the bible jamie and whoa I. whoa congratulations thank you thank that's you awesome. yeah that's a big step. just bought one went to mardell that, no up. that's yeah. bold uh hardback okay. Everything okay. like it's very nice. All the pages are there. Uh, yeah, tabs, tabs. So you can win the sword drills. Uh huh. <laughs> Old Testament, yeah, and New Testament. So really, both. Yeah, I got one with both of those combined. But that is yeah. Like you. you had to pay extra, but okay. I said it's 2024, and it's time. I love yeah. it. We're reading the Bible, it. and okay. Jamie reads the Bible that is uh, a side by side. So she's got NIV on one side and the Message on the other. Right. Oh, That's yeah. how she rolls. Yeah. Okay. And she starts giggling. I'm like, what's up? I know where you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she shows me uh, the translation. There's a part in Matthew in the NIV version where it talks about Jesus eating with sinners and drunks and gluttons and all this kind of stuff, right? Why would you do this? Why would you hang out with these sinners? That's what it says in the NIV. Okay, what about the message? And then she says, read the message. Okay. And it says... And Jesus was eating with all these drunks and gluttons. And instead of sinners, it says riffraff. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to clear the air here. When we call our beloved <laughs> listeners the riffraff, right, right. we don't necessarily uh, refer no. to your lifestyle. No, 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 no. no, no. But uh, either way. Yeah, either way. Welcome, Riff Raff. Yeah, welcome, Riff Raff. That was um, great. Yeah, side note, uh, another thing that has nothing to do with our episode today, but um, of interest okay. when it come, has to do with Bible. Um, well, not really Bible. Um, I was sent by a friend. Um, I don't even know. I'm just going to assume she's a listener of the Riff Raff, North Pointer. Um, she sent me a resource I'd never seen before. And I've, been, I've, been, I've been working in church for a while. Okay. She sent me... The Epistle of Jeremy. Have you heard the of the Epistle of Jeremy? No. What? I, yeah, like it's a real epistle. And an epistle, I'm not cussing. That is no. that's a letter <laughs> written by uh, an apostle. Great. I was going to ask you after, after you're off the By a female apostle, I think. I, I'm not sure how that works. Um, but but an epistle, it somehow didn't make the cut. <laughs> really? Of the, of the original 66 of the Council of Nicene. But... You know, um, it is it is my new favorite book of the almost Bible, the wow. Epistle of Jeremy. Truth is, I haven't read it all yet. It's sixty four verses or something. Um, who was who is Jeremy? I don't know. I've not done enough research yet. Eh. All I know is <laughs> I I one um, wildly interested in his life. Mm-hmm. Two um, n- automatically. Uh, lean towards thinking what he had to say is probably important. Uh, yeah. And three, a lot of questions about the council that determined yes. what didn't yes. make the cut. Yes. So the epistle of Jeremy. So anyway, huh. uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to recommend it yet because I've not read it. I wouldn't then. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. I, well, you're you going to? 
I recommend you look into it. That's what I recommend. It's like recommending a movie that you saw the trailer for. Oh, this is great. And then you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I, I, would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. go to that. So, Pistol Jeremy. Okay. okay. Pistol of Jeremy. Hopefully it makes it into your top five books of the Bible. And that, my friends, see what is what we call a segue in you the see biz. I did that? Because that's a segue. Because that's what we're talking about today. Uh-huh. The top five. Now, I know yeah, that some yeah, of you are yeah. like already looking at the uh, the policy book and saying, okay, isn't the rules of the riff that we do not prepare? They are. Those are the rules. And I got to tell you, here we just I, go. I, I'm a stickler to that rule of lack of preparation for this I'm episode. Not, listen, I'm not attacking you. But today, I came prepared with notes. Yeah, uh, if, you're, if you're not a viewer and you're just a listener, he is holding a piece of paper, yeah. which has you don't the do. top five moments of 2023. Oh, As a matter of fact, I have I six of them here. I crossed I mean, one out. I, <laughs> I can't. I wish that should be an episode. I, okay. What was number six? I'm not going to say because that's going to be hurtful. so curious. It was one of those. This was a moment as I was making my list of moments that were my favorite moments of the year. It made the list. And the more I thought about it, I thought, nah, that doesn't make the list. <laughs> that doesn't make the list. <laughs> so I... I'm so curious to what it is. It was a good moment. It's right. just it's kind of like the epistle of Jeremy. Right. If it's, we got time at good. the end, if we got time at the end. Yeah. I mean, because we haven't wasted I'll much hurt now. some feelings. <laughs> I'll hurt some feelings. All right. All right. So, All right. Let's just do, let's just do the top five. And the way they should think about it, if I did, I accidentally showed the front page of this earlier. If they zoom it in and they do all that kind of stuff, I want them to know not to be sad you didn't make the top five. Right. Be thrilled that you made number one of the rest. That's how you exactly like right. That. That's yeah. exactly right. Well, there's only room for five. So okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna say them, then we can riff about them. So we're okay. still kind of within okay. the rules. Are you gonna Are you gonna start like like Dave Letterman style? Are we going like bottom to top? Are you starting at number one? Are you starting at number five? How are you, how are you doing this? Well, Dave Letterman. Is side Dave Letterman. Note, side note, though, I was just gonna say that is a, I'd say uh, yeah. Last. Um, <laughs> okay. Dave Letterman, Jimmy Fallon, Conan O'Brien. Uh, who else you want to throw out there? Jay Leno. Jay Leno. Johnny Carson. Ugh. Are we going too many of these? That's, uh, Carson's a little I, I, okay I, you know. uh, outside of it. Um, but isn't there another? Who's the ABC guy? Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel? Kimmel. Okay, who's your favorite? Conan O'Brien. Really? He's by, my least favorite of all of them. By far. why? I thought he was the. I thought he was. I loved his interview style. Um, and what like endeared me? He had the Walker stick. Do you remember the Walker stick? No. What? I've not seen a lot of that. Just ran. He had a yellow stick at his desk. Okay. And then he would just be talking, and then he would look at it, and then he would pull it, and they would show a clip from Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> that was just the most bizarre clip in the world. It, it's the you just need to. YouTube. I've never seen Walker, Texas Ranger. Oh, you don't need to. You don't need to. You just need to YouTube. That's Chuck Norris, right? Yeah. Okay. It was brilliant. And then when he got kicked out of the Tonight Show, right? Yes. He was there for yes. I don't know, like seven days. Was it Save Coco? Right? Yeah. They did like every week, they did like their favorite memories of the show. And it would be a memory of yesterday. (laughs) But it was like done to this like super just like deep music. Or it would have been like of the like previous like guests they just had on. Yeah. So it was just plain, right? He's just so smart. I loved his comedy. Uh, I never followed him afterwards though, when he went to TBS or whatever. Okay. But you have my favorite. You, which one? Jimmy Fallon. Really, I I think he's he's delightful. He is delightful. Here's and I, I'll tell I tell you why. The way he laughs with his guests, I I, oh. I feel like I want people to just enjoy me the way he seems to enjoy people. I'm like he's just so warm. He, yeah. I, I feel like he looks like he likes you right away. So he looks like the kind of guy that would be like, man, I just like being around you, and so I would like being around him. All right. I don't even know that's true. I I've never Jimmy met him. Fallon. I don't have I met him. Wait. No, I don't think I've ever you met haven't. him. No. No. Jimmy Fallon. No. Mm. Jimmy Kimmel. No, Mm-mm. I haven't met him. No. So anyway. Right. Top five. Top five. <laughs> Top five. And we David only, we're in a minute like nine or ten. Well, how long does it really take to read it five depends. things? It's not gonna take okay. long. So here, we right, go. here we go. Here Happy we go. New Year, everybody. Um, these are in no particular order. What? <laughs> You're not go- okay. Go ahead. Good grief. Well, <laughs> I'll put them in order. No, don't. You might mark I just one know off. what number six is. I, I, That's all the order I know. Okay, here's top five. All right. Let me just say with this. Let's go with number five. Okay. Let's go all number right. five. Yes. The DC annual event 
Dream Center annual event, top five moments of 2023 for me. Awesome. I would, I would, I would say yes to that. Really? Yeah. So wait, we're not going to talk on it though, right? Yeah, you're going no, to name them. I thought you were going to name them and then we're going to talk about no, them all. You're no. going to name them and then we're going to talk one, about it. And then we're going to talk, talk about, about, it. about it. Love yeah. the Dream Center annual event. So, okay. It is the number one night of bringing in funds for potentially the number one expression of North Point. Yep. I love the Dream Center. I love our Dream Center team. Um, I love everything that they're about. And to be able to see one, the team works feverishly. feverishly. So yeah, I mean, you work with that crew. I am leading up to the event. every single year. So impressed and inspired by that team. Yeah. I love like working like late into the night and like getting a project. I love that stuff. And Which work- we, you're you're the yin to my yang. That's I- <laughs> And it's so much fun being with them, right? Yeah. I mean, they are just nonstop. And it's not just like a project to get up. They have mission. They have purpose. Like they're doing it. Like you can just tell, like they're so excited for the night to come. Yeah. It's just a fun environment. Yeah. And Jody just leads it so well. She and leads the team it great. It's such a fun team to be around. I, yeah. love, I love that uh, aspect. Julie Neal. There's a name I'm throwing out there. Uh, always brings a, a classy touch. Great. De- decoration. Um and they don't think through how can we do this easier, which my mind kind of works that way. And so I'm always amazed when someone says, how can we do this better? Yeah. And I'm like, that's, that's, and so the amount of people in the event was sold out weeks and weeks before, mm-hmm. um, which is unique uh, for a fundraising event. Um, uh, you know, so, so it's just, it's just fun. It's classy. It's fun. It's fun to see everyone come out and support. And then uh, we have a couple sponsors who matched a hundred grand um, between the two of them uh, for the event, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then to see that it was completely matched and then some, uh, it won to be able to fund the program in a fun way, excellent way. Uh, Dream Center means a lot. Uh, you know, it, 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 it takes a lot to be able to make this happen. The community that we're in with the Dream Center is worth it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the kids uh, who are involved in the programs are worth it. The parents who are uh, stepping up. And so there are just so many volunteers at North Point who help make life happen in the Dream Center community. And I love it. So it's great. If it's, you are part of the Riff Raff, yeah. you've not been every November. So every this November, year, yeah. This year, they will have Buy another annual event. Yeah. You gotta go, right? I mean, they give tours. They get you understand the mission of the Dream Center as a whole so well on that night. Yeah, and the team just does a great job. So if you haven't gone, you are you're missing out. Yeah, I said it. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so that's number five. All right, that's number five. Number four. Hmm. Number four. I'm going with. I'm going with the gathering. Wow. The gathering topped my, it made my top four list wow. in the moments of 2023. So g- give us a, what is the gathering? The gathering is a moment where we're all able to come together, all campuses for really a night of worship to yep. walk through what does worship mean for North Point? Yeah. Um, and just gives us a kind of a, a time and a dedicated space to reflect that we uh, don't normally get to on a weekend. We do worship on a weekend, yeah. yes, but this is really a focus time to where we get to have all worship leaders, specifically Zach, really lead us through what does it mean to worship, yeah. right? And what does that look like? And on a weekend, how do we invite people in? How do we create a safe place? It's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful night yeah. to be able just to be together and to worship God. Yeah, I dig it. It's, um, you know, obviously we are mission driven. Um, so, uh, specifically weekends, everything we do, it doesn't change what we talk about. Doesn't It doesn't mean we're not there for Christians to grow. And I would hope every week we have practical next steps. But what a weekend mission is all um, uh, always filtered also through, hey, um, we've got multiple services, multiple locations. There's so many details to make this happen. Um, there's not a lot of margin in time. There's not a lot of margin in assumption of your background, your understanding. And so, um, and so I love it. But when we have a unique environment where 
not that we think everybody there has been following Jesus for a long time, but it is one of those environments where we're just going to assume for the sake of this environment, you're here because you want to just encounter Jesus. And um, it's, a, it's a fun, it's kind of like a camp vibe for those who grew <laughs> up with something like that um, without... You know, uh, anyway, it, 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 but still the DNA of North Point. Uh, uh, so it's just fun. We're not squeezed on time as much. Um, I certainly am not. <laughs> so I don't know if uh, people who are helping all the kids would feel the same way, but um, it's just a great night. And so it's packed out. Worship team does a phenomenal job. North Pointers showed up. Uh, it's just a cool time to encounter Jesus it's together. Great. And something else I loved about the event was Kid Point. So yep. they brought extreme intentionality to match up what we were doing inside of the auditorium, right? Yeah. So that night was a lot about gratitude and being thankful in all of these moments. They did the same style and kind of curriculum and, and lessons within Kid Point as well, right? Yeah. So just the whole night as a whole, the team as a whole, the environment as a whole, it was at Nixa, which a lot of people haven't been able to see. Yeah. Such a fun night, man. That Such great. a fun night. And on that note, I've got number three. <gasps> what is it? Grand opening of Nixa. Oh, Grand opening man. of Nixa. Top three moments. So loved wow. it. You're really heavy in September, October, November right now. Uh, I've got, really, I can't remember really, anything behind that. Um, I'm even looking at the rest of my list. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So my top five moments of the last quarter. Um, so yeah, here's the deal, which shows you this: if you're in a job interview and there's three people, be number three. You want to be you want to be the one who made the last impression. Is what I'm trying to say. That's what this whole show is about. That's the psychology of it. Um, but uh, grand opening of Nixa because it culminated years and years of pl- prep and planning. Um, an intense 12 months of building. Um, and, and, and the whole point was, and we were looking, uh, you and I, uh, you know, as, as we record this last night, we were walking with the board and talking about looking back at old board minutes in prep for the board meeting, uh, seeing in March of 2022, when we finally authorized the building of this. And then it started, you know, later that summer, you know, in 2022 and a year build. Um, and that was a lion's share of your role uh, that for 12 months and a lot of work leading up to it um, and several people on the team. And so, so much work and so much hope. And the thought was, we think that we will be able to see a couple hundred more people mm-hmm. that um, encounter Jesus at this campus if this is done well. And opening weekend um, was nuts. Um, is we have seen uh, we have seen every weekend since it opened. Um, as of the time we record this, we haven't had one weekend we had less than a thousand people in the Nixa campus mm-hmm. since we opened it. Right, um, and it's people who are newer. It's uh, to to even a church experience. We see the surveys coming in. Um, uh, uh, we see a lot of people who are like for whatever reason that new building became a new opportunity and a new uh, placeholder in their mind for hey I think it's time, and we're seeing our teams grow. Um, uh, this place is instantly seeing um, exactly what we had hoped. And it's people experiencing Jesus. We're seeing that in water baptisms. Um, it's, uh, I mean, as a matter of fact, the first water baptism there at the Nixie campus, we had 56, 50, 50 something water baptisms. We had never had anything close to that at Nixa. And so we're peeing, seeing him <laughs> <we're> peeing. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, we're seeing new people um, come uh, to, to faith in Christ and taking big next steps. Just love it. So what's it been like for you? You spent a big portion of the last couple of years uh, building this, walking forward, uh, seeing what wasn't there, um, and then trying to build that and mm-hmm. then to see it open. What was that uh, like? Incredible. I'm super thankful um, and appreciative to you, to the team, to the board for being able to be a part of it. <clears throat> you getting choked up? So, you getting yeah. choked up? <laughs> Either swallowed a fly or I'm crying. I don't know. I think it's a fly. I think it's yeah, the fly. It's a fly. Um, I just it was such a fun moment yeah. of my life and and being here at North Point. I just loved it, uh, and I think I also learned a lot through it. Of I honestly I feel like I learned gratitude through it in a way that I never have before. How so? Because you plan and plan and plan and plan and plan, right? 
I think Mike Tyson said you always have a plan until you get punched in the face. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, that's what the mix of building is and was, right? And I, yeah. and I think- You I'm know what built- Evander Holyfield says? You always have a plan until someone bites your ear off. <laughs> Anyway, half of it, just half of it. <laughs> yeah, not the whole thing. But I think that throughout the whole process, right, you have these plans, 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 plans. This changes, this changes, this changes. And I think my focus went on that. And then on opening day, like it was just this like breath and like this just very grateful attitude and process of like, man, we had so many like issues with this or this or is this going to be right? It's like, it doesn't really matter, right? Like, right. We're, we're reaching people and it's, to form relationships. And as we go forward with the Knicks of building, it's going to be crowded here and crowded there and crowded there. And you just got to still have that mindset of like, yeah, I'm thankful. Right. <laughs> right. There's always going to be a challenge. So I, I really, really felt like I could live through the obstacle is the way, right? Like I really did feel like that. And I feel like that going forward too, of like, yeah, the building doesn't solve things. It right. gives more opportunity for things. Yeah. Right. It's just such a fun fun experience, man. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really thankful for that one. One of the things that you said afterwards, I've heard you say it a couple times, um, that you absolutely loved the managing the building process and um, that you, uh, that's just something that you're learning of, man, this is, this is in your wheelhouse. You dig it. <laughs> I'm so thankful because we are a multi, multi-site church and uh, we got lots of projects ahead of us. Yes. And uh, whether it's uh, rehabbing things, whether it's adding extensions, sites, remodeling leases, all those, that's part of, part of what we do. And I believe, um, that's part of what helps execute this vision is we need these spaces and we don't value spaces more than we value what spaces provide. Right. But at the same time, we're, we're foolish if we think uh, spaces don't make an impact. And so right. I love the fact that God's brought you on the team in this capacity with these gifts. Uh, with these gifts. Um, I, I, I mean, you know my style and even leading on this is I get really involved in um, the very front part of planning and then I'm pretty much hands off. Uh, I mean, like really. And and so the fact that that's not a burden on you um, is certainly a blessing to the organization too. So no, thank love you. It. Well, I'll get out of your way. I promise. I will get out of your way. I'm not going to muddy up those waters. So it's it's fun, man. Appreciate that's it. Good. So that's number three. Number three. Number two. We're number at number two. two. Oh, Thanksgiving at the Dream Center. Really? Thanksgiving at the Dream Center Whoa. was number two for me. Now, again, that's a recency bias. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but let me tell you why. Um, so, so I know we have a Dream Center team all the time. I mean, we have every Wednesday night, the Dream Center team um, provides a community meal. Um, every school day, there's programming going on. Uh, uh, there's classes throughout the week for adults. There's, there's so many great programs going on. Um, and the, the Thanksgiving meal is probably one of the bigger meals they do uh, of the year. And so, um, one, it's a really good meal. And so, uh, I look at this, it probably means way more than Thanksgiving meal. But for me, this is one where every year uh, I'll be there because every, every time we're in town, um, that, that's just, just become kind of a special deal. And so I see what probably happens all the time. But you see an army of people who are providing food, uh, who are prepping. What does it take to feed hundreds of people uh, who are getting supplies? How do we do this in a way that is cost effective, but yet is a win? And then how many, I think there were 65 volunteers on Wednesday night of Thanksgiving just to serve That's and awesome. prepare for that event. And then to see hundreds of people come out um, uh, who this was a blessing for them, for their family, for their community, uh, for their friends, um, to see to see people make this part of this. For me, why that was so special is one, I love what the Dream Center is doing. Again, that ties into what I talked about number five, but I love what they're doing on a weekly basis, on a daily basis. I love the uh, literally dozens to hundreds of volunteers throughout the year of North Pointers who say, I want to help make this happen. Um, they're doing good work. And um, that 
was way more important than any message that uh, was spoken at one of our campuses all year. And I think God uses mm-hmm. messages. I hope so. I'm, uh, you know, um, but bottom line is that was a real um, moment of, of I, I think I think it's Matthew twenty five. If not, it's it's the sheep and the goats of what you do with your practical gifts is what you do for heaven. And I'm like, man, that that's who we want to be. That's North Point right there. Loved it. Absolutely loved that's it. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Top two. Number two. Top two. That's great. Yeah. So Dream Center, if you're listening, if you're not listening, just pretend you are, but you wouldn't even hear that. But um, yeah, two, two of my top five. Two of my, two of my top five. Um, are, we, are we here? We're at number this one. This is it? Number one? This is yeah. number one right it's here. It's not even a moment. What it's a collection of them? I that's not fair. Hold on, hold on. It's three hundred and sixty-three moments. Okay, okay. Three hundred and sixty-three water baptisms in twenty twenty-three. That is three hundred sixty-three different people who said, "I have made a decision internally. I want to make a declaration publicly that." Um, that I want to live for Jesus. And they go in the water uh, to signify uh, Jesus' connection with Jesus of his death and then resurrection. They're raised out of the water to walk in new life. 363, our goal for the year, 280. We had a goal, 280. Uh, When we got closer to the goal, we thought, well, I wonder if we can get 300. It had been since pre-COVID that we've had 300 baptisms in a year. And uh, this is the 11th full year that I've been here. We've never had that many in those 11 years. 363 baptisms. um, And that's our number one metric uh, of, uh, you know, you have to ask yourself, you know, what's business every year? What's business? Um, and then how's business? And those are two important questions if you want to stay in business, right? And what's our business is provide a safe place for, peop- uh, for people to find and follow Jesus. And a lot of people will say, yeah, you guys are a safe place. Okay, and we are. I want to be a safe place. But it's a safe place for a purpose. Right. <laughs> it's just a safe place. It's for a purpose. So we can be the safest place on the planet, but if people aren't finding and following Jesus, then business ain't good. And when and so how do we, we don't measure that by how many people raise their hands during worship. To me, it's, that's not a metric, that's an expression. Uh, we don't measure that by how many people start giving financially. I think that's great. It helps, uh, helps the mission. We don't measure it by how many people come to the front in an altar experience or how many people even mark, I'm choosing to say yes to Jesus today because I don't know what that means. We measure that most accurately by how many people want to say, I'm going to go in front of a bunch of people and I'm going to get baptized. Um, Now, again, I don't know what that means to everybody. Um, And I'm not saying if you didn't get baptized, that means you haven't had a transformed life, but that's the number one metric that says people are saying yes to Jesus. 363 this year, which is the most we've ever had. So I'm like, that's a win. That's my favorite. That's why we do what we do. Um, So- Love it. I love it. Yeah. Water baptism. That's super one of those 363. My oldest daughter. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? So, I what was that like? You were able to baptize her. I was. Yeah. And I, it, a lot of people, especially if they come on the team, maybe if they're not, when you say we have a goal of 280, yeah. it might sound like a, uh, like just a metric. Right. Right. Yeah. But if you don't know the number, you don't know the people. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Like that's, and you, you always talk about if it's just yeah. a number, which I love yeah. this. Like, if you're not able to name those numbers, be names. you yeah. are doing it wrong. Right. Right. So for me, like being able to name Lily, like, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty cool, man. Yeah. It's a pretty cool moment in her life, pretty cool moment in my life. And uh, just appreciative that we have a space that uh, invites people in like we do. And yeah. uh, I love it. That's your number one. I, I love it. that. I dig it. You know, and and we're not, you know, the way we work here, you know, our we we have markers that we feel like, hey, if we hit this marker, we feel like we're making momentum and and, and make and making a move towards significance in this area. So we're always going to have goals. We're always going right. to have markers for some of right. those uh, places. Our goal isn't like, okay, next year, 364 or bust. And then, and then it's like, <laughs> let's put a ton of pressure on people. If you feel like you've sinned since you got baptized last, right? Like, cause then all of a sudden it becomes about a stupid number and it becomes about 
about our pressure, it becomes yes. about us. Um, and, we, and we've really tried to resist that. We really, really tried to be like, hey, here's the deal. Let Jesus do the heavy lifting. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's create a safe place for people to find and follow Jesus. We believe that when we are faithful there, he's faithful to talk. And when people take a next step of saying yes to Jesus, that's a natural expression. So 2024, I have no idea. Ooh. Top five. If you've got uh, something that you want to crack the list, my guess would be like, do wait it. till September. Yeah, do it quarter yeah. four, man. Yeah, do it, do quarter, it quarter, quarter four. four. I am going to sail for the next three quarters, yeah, but you are going to have my best starting yeah. in September. I'll be watching. Oh. I'll be watching. So <laughs> awesome. So, hey, have a happy new year. Thanks for listening to us this first week of the year or whenever you did get around to listening to it. That's cool. Um, and Justin, one of my resolutions this year is to listen to every episode of The Ref. For real? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I mean, you do every episode, so haven't you already listened? Wow, I feel like you just cheapened my goal. Well, check that baby off the list. Yes, I 2024, did. here we yes, come. Yes, I did. Come on. <laughs> All right. Hey, have a great week. Have a great year. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Riff. We'll have a brand new episode every week, wherever you find podcasts. <laughs>